Hi guys, it's Brian, back with another video. So I got some new silk filament in, and one of the first things I like to do is run a temperature tower, like this one. However, I'm getting a lot of stringing with this particular filament, so I wanted something that would show that a little bit better. So, today, let's build a temperature tower. Let's get started. First things first, we need to grab the STL file. The one I'm using today is the Smart Compact Temperature Calibration Tower. It's available on Thingiverse. I'll put a link in the description below. Now the reason that I like this one is because uh, it does overhangs, bridges, stringing, curves. There's all kinds of little tests in there to help you really dial stuff in. Uh, there are quicker ones to print, and what you learn today, you can apply to those as well. So there's two ways to do this. The author gives us the information that each floor is exactly 10 millimeters and the stand is 1.4 millimeters. And that's fine. I'm gonna set it up a little different way and I'll teach you how. But first, what we need to do is download the file. So we're gonna click on files. The author has a lot in here, but we're testing PLA. So we're going to use this first one right here. So let's go ahead and click download and get started. All right, I've got the file loaded up in Cura. This is 4.8. Now, if you're using the same slicer I am, you can probably do the exact same thing I do and you're good to go. If your setup is a little bit different, uh, follow the steps, but apply them to your slicer or if you're using a different profile than I've got. So first things first, I'm using Silk PLA and that's why I'm running this test. So I've done a couple of things here. First of all, uh, according to the manufacturer, I should slow down the fan speed, so I've reduced that to 40%, and I should also slow down my print speed, so I'm going to drop that down to 30. Now, if you're using regular PLA, just use your standard settings, it'll be fine. You don't have to do that step for today. Looking at our temp tower, we're going to be testing from 225 degrees all the way down to 180. Now, when you download this STL, you've downloaded the model, and the slicer will tell the, your 3D printer to print it, but it doesn't know to change the temperature. That's the quote unquote hard part, right? So to do that, we've got to modify the G-code. First thing we're going to do, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to start my initial temperature at our high end, which is 225 degrees, which is our first section here. So if we just stop right here and slice it, it's going to print the whole thing at 225. We need to make temperature changes in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. So we need to figure out where to do that. Now, like I said, you can do it by the millimeter, but I'm going to do it by the layer. First, we need to find out where those layer changes are. So I'm going to go ahead and hit slice, but we're not done yet. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. <laughs> okay, let's close this out of the way. Let's go to preview. And what that's going to do is let us look at all of our layers. Okay. So if we look on the right side of the screen, you have this slider here. And you can adjust this up and down and adjust all of the different layers from layer one, which is our brim and the start of our base, all the way up to, in this case, layer 507, which is the top layer of this last section. We have nine places that we need to change the temperature. Remember, we're starting on layer one at 225. So we want our first temperature change to happen when we create or when we print this section here. So we need to go look and figure out where that is. We're gonna slide this back down until we find the end of that first test. Too low. Right, that looks too high. Right, I bet if I go to 57, looky there. So that's this entire first section. This is what we want to print at 225. So starting on layer 58 for Cura, it may be different in yours, we want to change that temperature. So we're going to write that number down. 
layer 58. Okay. And then we're going to come up and find the next change, which I'm betting is going to be right there. Um, 107. Sure enough, that's going to finish that one. So our next temperature change is going to happen at 108. So our first one was at 58, our second one was at 108. They're 50 apart. Because of the way this file is made, I'm betting that's going to carry all the way through. So let's go to 158. Yep, exactly. So we're going to write down 58, 108, 158. Our next one should be 208. Two fifty eight, three oh eight, three fifty eight, four oh eight, and our final temperature change will happen at four fifty eight because all the rest of this will print at the final temperature of one eighty. All right, so we have our nine layers that we need to change temperature at. But now we need to tell it to do that. So how do we do that? We modify the G-code. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Brian, why don't you just give us your G-code? Well, my G-code has custom commands for my printer and my setup. And while it may not necessarily mess yours up, it might. Or I might be a nefarious person and put bad stuff in there to intentionally cause your nozzle to crash into your bed. And while that'd make me a real jerk and I wouldn't actually do it, somebody out there might. So best practice is to go ahead and do your own G-code. The cool thing about Cura is we can do that if we go up here and do extensions, post-processing, modify G-code. Now remember, we have nine layers that we need to change. So we're going to add a script. And what we want to do is we want to change at a Z height. So while there's all these other options, this is the one we want. And we need it nine times. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it nine times here. So that's one, two, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So if you recall, the author gave us, gave us information on the height in millimeters, and we could do it that way. I just, I like doing it by layers because I think it's a little bit more accurate. So taking those layers that we wrote down, we know that our first change has to happen at layer number what? 58. And we want that temperature change to happen on layer 58 and all the other layers that come after that until we tell it otherwise. So we want to put that on target layer and subsequent layers. And then what do we want to happen at layer 58? You got all these options. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to change our extruder temperature. Now remember, we started at 225 degrees. So at layer 58, we want it to go to 220, excuse me, 220 degrees. Oh, 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 and see, I already made my first mistake. I'm putting this in in the bottom one here, and this does matter. They have to be in order. So, let's just get rid of that real quick. Let's go back up here to the first one, where it should be. We're going to reinforce what I just taught you, and put in our layer number there, and then we're going to put in number 58, target layer, and we want to change that extruder temperature and make that... 220 degrees. Then we're going to come to our next one. We're going to change our layer to 108, target layer. And at 108, we're going to change it to 215. And we're just going to keep coming down the list with those numbers. And, and I'll tell you what, I'll edit in those numbers on the side of the screen here so you can see what I'm doing as I go. So now we're up to layer 158, and we're going to change this temperature to 210. Did I screw something up? No, nope, we're good. All right, layer number 208. 
and we're going to change that temperature to 205. Layer number 258, and we're going to change that temperature to 200. Layer number 308, and we're going to change that temperature to 195. Do I need to narrate this as we go, or does everybody kind of have it? I suspect you probably have it. But I feel like I should talk because, you know, it's a video with audio, right? 185. I have messed something up somewhere, and I know this because I think I'm out of options. Alrighty, so I messed up somewhere there in the process. I've gone back through, looked at my list, and now we'll just double check. So our last change should be to 180, moving back up the list, 185, 190, 195, 200, 205, 210, 215, and 220. Beautiful. So we have nine scripts telling us to change the temperature nine times. We're going to close that, and you notice we have this little tool icon down here with 9. That's showing those scripts are there. So now we need to re-slice the file so that it puts all of this information together. And that's it, we're done. So we now have our file, we now have our temperature change commands and our G code. So at this point we can go ahead and save it and print it. So I've got Octoprint, I'll send it there. Obviously if you don't, you wanna save it to your SD card and do it the old fashioned way. But let's send it to the Ender 3v2 and print it. Now, while we're waiting on our print, let's go back into our slicer and delete out all of those custom G codes because you don't want those in for your next print. Well, the print's done, so let's pull it off. That snap, I just love it. Let's take a closer look. First of all, I really like the color of the filament. I think it's coming out pretty good, especially in that mid-range, more so than on either end. Um, to my untrained eye, I don't see a lot of differences in any of the layers. If you see something, I sure would love to hear about it. Now, I'm seeing what possibly could be an under-extrusion issue because the walls look a little thin to me. Um, all the bridges and overhangs kind of look the same. The only real thing that I see is there's a lot of fine hairs in here in the, uh, the stringing test. I've got a couple of pictures I took that I think will show that better, so let's take a look at those. So what I'm seeing is stringing at every level. And again, to me, that indicates probably more that I need to mess with my retraction settings. And I, I think I might want to look at either my E-steps or my flow. But I'm looking and I'm thinking that somewhere around that 205 to 210 is probably the best for this filament. At any rate, these are my results. There's one final test you want to do that I'm not going to right now, but you want to break it. Yeah, break it, because different temperatures are going to provide different levels of strength. So take your fingers and probably that 180 level will pop right off. You might want to take some pliers and play with some other levels. Find where that really strong point is. And that gives you a couple of options. Do you want to go for strength? Do you want to go for pretty? And it'll help you improve your prints as you go. Congratulations, you've made your own temperature tower. Now hang on to that file and every time you get new filament, Go ahead and run one of these and see how it comes out. I hope you found today's video helpful, and if you did, I'd love it if you'd leave me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos that might interest you. Perhaps like these that I'll throw up on either side of the screen. Thanks so much for watching.